This is a short scene, but it has some interesting and important bits in it. Laertes is about to leave for France and the family is saying their goodbyes. This scene is comprised of three different conversations. First, Laertes talks to Ophelia, then Polonius talks to Laertes, and lastly, Polonius talks to Ophelia. Laertes has some advice to offer his sister before he leaves. For Hamlet and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion, and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature, forward not permanent, sweet not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. He knows that she has a thing for Hamlet, and he tells her that she should consider it a passing thing, a trifle, a fashion, a toy. Violets are beautiful but short-lived flowers, so they are a metaphor for beautiful things that are brief. His concern is that she will give her heart away to Hamlet, and the problem with this is, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state, and therefore must his choice be circumscribed into the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. If she falls too hard for him and then he has to marry someone else for political reasons, Laertes is worried that she will be heartbroken. He also tells her by no means must she sleep with him. She appreciates this advice, but then she gives him some of her own in return. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good, my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do show me the steep and thorny way to heaven. Whiles like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not his own reed. She tells him that I will heed your advice, but dear my brother, you better practice what you preach. Then comes Polonius. We've heard a bit from him in the last scene, but we learn a little more about him here. He comes in a little blustery and says that Laertes better hurry, it's time to leave. But then he figures he had better give him some words of wisdom before Laertes gets on that boat. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unapportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance into a quarrel, but being in, bear to that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit, as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich or gaudy. But the apparel oft proclaims a man, and they in France of the best rank and station are most select and generous, chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Let's look at these few precepts that, by the way, went on and on. They all have to do with making the proper impression on others. They are all about externals, all about how to act and how to be so that you come off looking good. It's a little ironic that he tells him that by being true to yourself you will not be false to any man when he just offered a big long list of ways to be false to every man. I think that the way Polonius is using the word true here might mean beneficial actually, in which case this last bit is in perfect accord with the first bit. Before Laertes leaves he says to Ophelia, Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. Polonius overhears this and asks Ophelia about it. She says, oh, it's nothing, it just has something to do with Hamlet. Well, this sets Polonius off. This paternal lecture must have been brewing for a while because he unloads on her. He's heard that she's been spending some time with Hamlet and he accuses her of being too dumb to know what's going on. He tells her that everything that Hamlet says and does might look good, but he's got one thing on his mind. Ophelia tries to push back, but she's no match for her father. He goes on for a bit about how she's dumb and how Hamlet's using her, and then he concludes with this. This is for all. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. And Ophelia responds with only, I shall obey my lord. Well now we know a little bit about the family Polonius. And now we are going back to the ghost story. Act 1, Scene 4. When Hamlet speaks with the ghost of his father. Thank you and we'll meet you there.